Many of the role models that exist today have very little to do with changing the world or new discoveries, but more about how we believe we should be according to what we read, hear and watch. How do we see the light through all the media fog out there and find real inspirational people to look up to? We discuss this and more only on Women's AM. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear sisters, and welcome to Women's AM. In today's show, we take a look at articles of interest in News Bites, discuss who our modern day role models should be, and we will be looking at an interesting dilemma later on, so make sure you stay tuned for that. With so much to get through this morning, I will move straight on to introducing our lovely panel. I'm your host, Adama, and today we have our Women's AM regular sisters, Liz and Hassana, and our special guest for today, Fatima Barakar. Assalamu alaikum, you guys. Wa alaikum. How are you guys doing? today alhamdulillah alhamdulillah very well, very well. Right, alhamdulillah it's great to see you all here alhamdulillah i'm going to take you on a little trip around the world <laughs> to the sunny beaches of west africa in sierra leone and introduce you to a, a delicacy that's actually very popular within that particular region um i tend to have um this for a uh, like special occasions, alhamdulillah, like Eid and Al-Qiqas and whatnot. And it's called Akara, where I come from. Akara. It's called Puff Puff in Nigeria. <laughs> so it's it's a bit of a, a popular delicacy. So I don't know if you'd like to try some. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Happy to. Yeah. I've heard of Puff Puff. Puff Puff, yeah. I haven't, yeah. but um, it sounds like, like almost like a donut type thing. Is that it what is it's like? It is like a donut. Like? You oh, could have it for lovely. breakfast, you could have it for lunch, you could have it, you could have it any time. Uh, so, sis, did you make these then? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, I had I some help. Mm. <laughs> I actually had a bit of an issue today because it's actually made to be it's, it's meant to be made with rice flour, but I got ground rice instead, so I had to kind of like yeah. mix it proper with mm. my. That's yeah. it's, really tasty. But it's lovely. Yeah, mm. inshallah. So you can have it like with chili and whatnot, inshallah. So. Mm. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. with chili, so, yeah. interesting. Yeah, really good. Alhamdulillah. Well, let's get on straight to our first segment of the show, News Bites. In this segment, we take a look at the articles that have caught our sight this morning, and you can, of course, join in the discussion by calling in. The number to call will be on the screen throughout the segment. So, sisters, we've got an interesting range of articles today, and I'm going to start with you, Liz. Just finishing my mouthful there. <laughs> Thank you, it's lovely. Um, my first um, article is such a feel-good story. Um, I got it from The Independent. And the headline reads, Mother in Wales post Gumtree ad offering free home-cooked meals for families living on benefits. Um, and basically this lady has um, just posted this advert for anybody who is, um, you know, uh, living on or, on or under the poverty line and doesn't get a lot of home-cooked meals. Um, you know, she will be offering this free of charge um, on one day a week for them to come round, you know, family and, you know, parents and children to come round and she will cook for them. Wow. You know, and it was, I thought it was just a lovely idea. Um, and it's, um, you know, obviously well needed. Um, yeah. Food banks are, are being more used now than ever. Um, and and it's, it's a real shame that a home-cooked meal has become, you know, a luxury or yeah. a delicacy. Um, but it, it kind of reminded me of the, the sort of Islamic uh, traditions that we have about our neighbours and how, you know, um, for 40 people around us, we have responsibilities to them. Absolutely. And if they're hungry and can smell our uh, food cooking, then, you know, we're obviously obliged to, to share it There's with them. There's even a hadith about the fact that Absolutely. you're not a believer or your iman is lacking if you know, you have your neighbour going hungry next yeah. to you. So, you know, yeah. she's actually taking on a very important principle. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is it's a sad situation that we have a lot of food banks, what with the yeah. economic crisis, but something good has come out of it where people are actually taking yeah. initiatives yeah. To, to support the people around them, isn't it? Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Yeah. Very inspirational you know. uh, lady there. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice to start the, the morning and stories like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got an interesting one here from The Guardian, and the headline is, Would you take your child on holiday during term time? So this is basically um, almost like a discussion discussion piece. It's got two um, sides to the story. So you have someone who's written in to say why they would take their child out of school during term time. 
And then you've got someone who says, why I wouldn't. So the first one is from an anonymous person, and they've basically given their reasons why they're taking their child out for a holiday. And um, they say that um, their family and, uh, and are going on away, and basically during term time, what happens is that um, they have a very, very difficult time booking holidays because the prices go up yeah. so much when the kids are on holiday. Mm. So in fact, what they've done is they've decided to take the kids out for a few days, go on holiday, and they've actually saved 800 pounds. Wow. So the discussion here is, is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Now the person who wrote in favour of it is saying that, well actually, how much are they really going to miss during the course of a couple of days? It's probably not going to be that much. So they feel that it is important to take them away and um, basically, you know, take them away on holiday and um, they get to kind of experience the world out there and travel yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Now the other person has actually said that no, <laughs> that's not the right thing to do because what you're teaching children is that school isn't important and you're, you're telling them that it's okay to miss school for a holiday. So there's a bit of a discussion piece here and I think it'd be interesting to find out what, what, what you know, the sisters on the panel would do in this situation. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's definitely one to discuss, inshallah. Yeah, definitely. no, it is. I think it's really interesting but I, I do agree with the point that I think there is a lot of value in family holidays as well. Mm. Not that there isn't value in education, of course there is, but... Um, you know, the, this is time when you kind of cement the family relationships and yeah. they, they might have educational or positive experiences on holidays as Absolutely. well, isn't it? What do you think about this, Fadima? I mean, would you sort of go to the extent of taking your children out on, on, um, on holiday during term time? Do you think it's a good thing? I think it really depends which year my children would be in. Yeah. <clears throat> so if my child was in year six and he's kind of getting ready for secondary school, I might be more reluctant to do that if he's mm. coming later exams and things like that. But I think... Um, Obviously, you wouldn't want to take them out for extended periods of time. Mm. They're going to really miss out. They're going to come back and be kind of disoriented, yeah, aren't they? And, yeah. and not be able to fit into the, the classroom uh, or, or the lessons, really, yeah. and, and follow them. Um, so I think it's really um, up to parents to kind of discuss it with the head teacher. Don't just go without discussing it with yeah. them, you know, because yeah. head teachers are not there to make your life difficult for you. Yeah. Um, I've taken my children out um, on one occasion. Yeah. Um, and the head teacher was very happy, you know, because she knew that they would keep up with the work. Right. Um, and it wasn't for a huge length of time. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's working with the, the school. It's about finding yeah. a balance, isn't it? But I would say that, you know, if you do travel, that that is a sort of se a sense of education as well. So, yeah. you know, who knows what will happen in the future? Except Allah. So I'm going to go straight to you, Liz, with your next article. Inshallah. Yeah. Well, my next story is a bit of a bizarre one, to be honest. It's from the Huffington Post. Um, well, the, the headline reads: One million students are using sugar daddies to pay for tuition. You know, where do I start with this story? Basically, um, it is talking about this this website that matches wealthy individuals, usually male, with students, obviously, you know, female students, poorer students, um, and this is a way for them to, you know, survive and, and pay for their tuition fees while they're at university. Um, and it, it describes it as um, creating mutually beneficial relationships. Um, in some instances, um, the sugar baby, as, as the, the students are called, uh, will receive up to £5,000 a month from their sugar daddy, um, you know, plus fees and, and other ad hoc things are paid for as well. Um, this, uh, I read about this first of all in America, and now mm -hmm. y you're kind of seeing it more and more over here. And apparently in 2013, this site received um, a 54% increase in student membership. So you can see it is literally, you know, soaring. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, again, you know, the kind of distasteful things of, you know, women being a commodity. It's the kind of two-tiered exploitation, uh, you know, exploitation of the wealthy over the poor, exploitation mm -hmm. of you know, men exploiting women. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it's obviously... It's kind of interesting because there's been a lot of statistics coming out to indicate that ever since the top-up fees have, have increased, yeah. Yeah. that more and more people are actually not dissuaded from going to university. But what we found with this, quite interestingly, is that people are happy to go to university and take up these large amounts of debt, but, you know, there is... They're, they're sort of cutting corners to yeah. find how they can actually get this money because mm. what they're receiving from so the government not be enough. Honestly, yeah. reading a story like this, it's really disturbing the lengths that people are having to go to in order to kind of pay what really is huge amounts of money for their mm. education. And, you know, the whole point of education is that it's supposed to be accessible for people Absolutely. and everyone exactly. should have an equal chance in order to, to you know, get a, a, a good grounding. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're seeing these, you know, these, these women who, yeah. like you said, it is, it's exploitation. Yeah. 
what position to be in and it's not that they they're kind of pining after designer shoes or handbags or anything like that they, they, Basics they want a degree yeah. you know degree, yeah. it's okay we'll go on to our next article from sister Hassana sticking with the education type theme we've got from the Telegraph schools forced to disclose what they teach about sex on their websites mm. so this is basically um, an article from the Telegraph which talks about the fact that every school in England is now being told to set out their sex education syllabus for the first time and this comes amidst rising concerns about the um, over sexualization of children and and you know the discussion about what are they teaching children in mm. schools with regards to sex education so there's you know it's, it's an interesting article it talks about lots of different things now we obviously we know that sex education comes under the personal social health and um, economic syllabus which is not part of the kind of national curriculum it's more of a kind of supplementary curriculum which covers things like you know bullying um, alcohol um, mm -hmm. all of those kind of things and it's, uh, it forms part of um, educating the child in terms of their emotional intelligence mm -hmm. now the schools have been required um, up until this point to kind of detail their general curriculum on the website but they haven't been required to do so for PSHE but the new le legislation will mean that they will have to do that so a lot for a lot of people this is good news you know they're very happy that schools are being required to mm -hmm. detail exactly what their children are going to be taught in schools however others are kind of you know a little bit concerned about mm -hmm. it I mean, I've got a quote here from uh, Justine Roberts. She says in the article, um, she's a chief executive of Mumsnet. She says it's good news the government is now asking schools to be transparent about their sex, uh, sex education provision. But what parents on Mumsnet, as well as many experts, are calling for is compulsory, appropriate relationship education that is fit for purpose in the digital age. And then she goes on to say a really shocking statistic, actually. I was really surprised by this. She says four out of five of their users think sex education should address issues like pornography as well as consent and respectful relationships. So I think there is a, a you know a wide discussion that needs to be had about this issue and it's particularly for parents. I think yeah. it is a very very big subject and you know it's 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 definitely a discussion which is probably going to be carrying on for for a yeah, while. It definitely has, there's, there's definitely a lot of vagueness to this. I mean how do you mm. actually measure how a teacher is actually going to promote specific aspects of, of relationships uh, education curriculum because every teacher has their own type of style and method of, of delivering their lessons. I mean, what do you think about this, Sister Fadima? I think um, in our times as parents we can't afford to not have an open relationship with our children. Uh, you know, we've got to be the ones who educate them and inform them about uh, the right things at the right times. I yeah. think, you know, it's, yeah. it's all about being age appropriate yes, you know? exactly, yes. and not shying away from and, and making certain subjects a taboo yeah. especially when our children come to us and talk to us about them I think it is uh, helpful to know you know exactly what kind of things are going to be taught I know a lot of Muslim parents actually exclude their children from uh, sex education in schools and would like to provide that themselves yeah. you know uh, which is fine as well uh, but at least if you know that the sorts of things are going to be uh, discussing in class then you as a parent can come in there and say, well, what did you discuss? And let's talk about yeah, it and, and yeah. really give the Islamic guidelines for that. It does lead yeah. me to wonder as well, why is it only now that this has happened? You know, yeah, surely this is something exactly. that should have been there yeah. when the general curriculum was uh, put up on websites as well. This would just have been put up as well. So. Yeah. A little bit bizarre to me, but definitely okay. And on to the last article of today. Yeah, my last uh, story today is from the Daily Mail. Um, again, unfortunately, another sad story. Um, tragedy as a mother who had a gastric bypass surgery so she could give birth dies from rare infection caused by the operation. You know, this is really, really sad. She was, um, you know, overweight. She had a, a condition, a hormone imbalance, um, found it difficult to lose the weight through other um, avenues mm. so it wasn't a vanity thing that she had this this procedure it was because you know she desperately wanted a child and she did she had a child and, and she's now four years old yeah. um, but unfortunately she did develop this rare condition um, you know slipped into a coma and unfortunately died and it's just um, you know sad thing for the family, sad thing for the child mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah. being the first sort of yeah. generation yeah. Um, you know we're, we're having these kind of procedures these yeah. things are only now coming up so well, we've actually run out of time aware. for this segment it was a really interesting and a very sad situation for that woman and yeah. definitely we hope to cover more stories like that as well inshallah so barakah for that. We're off to a quick break now but before